I am Liz Wright. Welcome to Live Your Best Life. The only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life. We're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory, and we are rising up strong now in this hour. Hi, family. Thank you for tuning in today and joining me for this week's episode of Live Your Best Life. It's going to be a very, very special conversation today. I have the honor and the joy of being able to introduce you all to one of my dear friends who she's just a beautiful woman of God whose whole heart belongs to Jesus. She's she's a mom. She's a wife. She's also an international prophet and intercessor who's respected and loved by people all over the world. It is my privilege and honor to welcome into the conversation with me today, Sarah Jane Bigard. Sarah, welcome. Thank you, Liz. What a great welcome. And it's just lovely to be with you and see you and have been loving Live Your Best Life. And so it's an honor for me to be here from Scotland with you today. Oh my goodness, it's a joy. I'm excited to see what Jesus does as we begin to talk because honestly, family, um, SJ, I call Sarah Jane SJ. So SJ and I have known each other for a long time and we're in our interior life, in our secret life with Jesus, we're very, very similar. So I just encourage you, you know, as we begin to talk, I'm going to ask SJ to share some of the treasures of her life. Um, She's actually just authored the most amazing new book called Seeing Beyond, which you'll be able to get a copy of. Um, but which which includes a lot of the treasure of her deep real walk with Jesus Um, but you will be so blessed by reading that because it is a how-to it's not just that you can walk like this it's the how you can walk like this you know learn through years in the trenches of walking out many many intercessory assignments but but I want to begin so I encourage you you're going to get blessed listen for the nuggets for your own life today as we begin to talk with each other but SJ I wanted to begin by asking you to share with everybody that life-changing experience that you had where you had a visitation from Jesus. Would you go there? Would you share that with us? Sure. I mean, like yourself, there's been many occasions when I've met with Jesus that have been so impactful in my life. Mm. And isn't that what you want? The reality of the transformation of Mm. the living God with you, our living savior. And, Mm. and just that sense of the reality of the spirit realm, the reality of who Jesus is, the reality of his amazing character and, and love for us. And so for me, Mm. um, there have been many, but the one that I opened in the in the book with uh, was about ten years into my walk with with faith and yeah and uh, faith life, you know, mm. religious life. Let's say you know because a lot of it had been you know reading the word, encountering God, um, in small ways. But this changed my life forever, and so it was very much that I'm on the floor. I'm in a worship set. I can remember the carpet, you know, it was so imprinted (laughs) on me. I can't remember the music, but I can just remember uh, weeping and crying out to God inside of myself. I just want more of you, Jesus. I just want more of you. I just want to know you more. I just want to understand your ways more. But above all of that, it is just that driver of, I just want to know you more, Jesus. And so I can remember that just really snotty, messy crying, you know, that way that you can sometimes get when you go after Jesus. And I you just don't care. I just don't just care. But desperation. I, yeah, it was just that I was aware of kneeling on the floor and just being in that place of, oh, I'm just desperate but I was a hot mess. And so I, at one point did the whole, I'm going to put my hand over my face because, you know, this is getting really ugly now. <laughs> so, but in that moment, as if you will, the ugliness of the emotion uh, and the desperation of my heart, 
I saw Jesus right there and he was right in front of me on the carpet with me and he just said just come into my arms and it was like he knelt alongside me but then he led down and he said come and let me put my arm around you and so I literally led on the floor and felt the arms of Jesus just en encircling me and in that moment it was like the song of songs in reality it was that you know lay your head on me and let let you have you know let me have or let you have your rest in me in that moment but it just sealed something in me it just fused his love his passion uh, coursing through my body um, in in the real time and it wasn't a vision because we're used to having visions, right? As seer prophets, yeah. we're used to right. having visions and encounters closed with our eyes closed open with our eyes open. But mm. this was very much Jesus in the moment in that place with me, holding me and me letting him hold me. And that, um, yeah, just the, I'm feeling the goosebumps as I remember so it. I, yeah, just, I can feel the presence of Jesus really strongly yeah. while you're sharing, actually, there's impartation happening. Yeah, and just that sense of, you know, I did not want to leave that place ever. It was like, I just want to stay here right now. I just want to stay here right now. And I can remember hearing a voice from the um, the platform. Uh, and actually, it was... <laughs> I was meant to be on the ministry team and I was one of the leaders and I'm like, I don't want to leave this place, you know, yeah. and somebody said something like, if you can get off the floor after worship. And I thought, I just want to stay here. And so I stayed there for as long as I could, uh, as people began to mill around my feet and, and get in the way of this encounter. But the, the, Jesus just said, you can come back here anytime. You can come into my arms at any point. And I think at that moment, the reality of Jesus' presence in my life was so accessible, so available, so easy and so tangible um, that that began even more of a pursuit. And I think, Liz, you know exactly what I mean. When you pray that, I want to know you more, I want more of you, Jesus you're never satisfied <laughs> you're never satisfied and it's just like every encounter you have with him every moment you have with him it's just like you just want more don't you you just yeah. want more yeah, yeah you do you just I mean I can feel it there's like impartation coming off you when you're speaking and I'm starting to get like feel joy bubbly up inside me and then I was getting teary and then my hunger was coming up inside me again and it's true isn't it every experience we have of him you just get more and more hungry for him you're fulfilled and hungry at the same time you know constantly desperate for more yet no like you said the the experience of his love it changed you you know the, once you know his love it's it can never be taken away from you can it this is the the privileged life that we were born again to live we were created to live and that Jesus has made the way for us to live and it's and it's his desire and I think at the moment this is he's drawing all of us back to his feet into this experience and that's why I think your book is so on time it's so important right now because because religion doesn't cut it anymore for any of us right everyone's done with trying to live our best life trying to live a good Christian life and it's noble to desire to do that but we end up burnt out exhausted and, and and complicated in the way that we live where really it's like you experienced it's that we can know him do you know honestly I'm just going to read this scripture SJ while you were talking I kept thinking of one John one because your life epitomizes what I believe is the apostle John describing to all of us the normal Christian life you know I'll just read it really quickly because it's just really strong in my spirit it says, it's what you just talked about. It says, we saw him with our very own eyes. We gazed upon him and heard him speak. Our hands actually touched him. The one who was from the beginning, the living expression of God. This life giver was made visible and we have seen him. We testify to this truth. The eternal life giver lived face to face with the father and has now dawned upon us so we proclaim to you what we have seen and heard about this life giver so that we may share and enjoy this life together 
Isn't that amazing? So that we, so they preached this, they preached their relationship with Jesus, the testimony of their lives so that we could step in together. Everybody can step in and share and enjoy this life together for truly our fellowship, our relationship, right? Is with the father and with his son, Jesus, the anointed one. And it's just, it's what you've said and it's what you do, isn't it? You preach this, you live this, you you teach and activate people into this experience that you live. You know, obviously we can only take people where we go. So yeah. I um, so that's permission for all of you. We're supposed to live in encounters. And if you're not, we, we're gonna pray for you big time. We're gonna pray, and that's what we're doing, you know, that's why we're doing this show, that's why we're doing everything we're doing. We because we've experienced Jesus, there's nothing else, and we just passionate that the whole bride will wake the whole bride will come into encounters and out of that sensation of separation so so Esther, i wanted to ask you yeah. when when you're um activating people and teaching people who are stuck mm. and say they cut they're feeling that sensation of separation they can't experience jesus what can you give us some nuggets so a couple of the keys that you you use to take people from where they are where they're stuck into the experience of him mm. yeah I think often we we've read scripture haven't we and we thought well I, I'm reading about the love of Jesus I, I'm even reading Song of Songs I'm thinking that's beautiful you know it's poetic um it's reality but then actually it's the the diving in to the the realm of the spirit that is um underneath the scriptural words or or, or um, holding if you will I mean you know as a seer you're kind of aware of that it's like the word of God sits on the realm of the spirit and we're invited to dive deep into that and so you find quite often that people will be trying to cerebrally think I want to engage with Jesus and it's in you know the mind is engaged and of course that's so western isn't it and, and also mm -hmm. Greek we're so used to being taught that way but actually it's more the the, the, the Eastern way, which is the all encompassing, the, the, the mental and the spiritual and the physical. And so for this, this whole realm of seeing and experiencing and sensing in the spirit, which is all encompassing, it's taste, touch, smell, hearing, yeah. it's all available. And I always say when I'm teaching it, it's like if I was um, blind in this realm of the earth, I would be having part of an experience but not the fullness of the experience and I feel like the same for uh, having our experience with Jesus that we need to engage and activate all of our senses and so some of the top tips that I would give uh, are really beginning on in my own journey Jesus is the gateway he is the way through it's seek his face seek first his kingdom and almost like internally uh, position yourself towards Jesus you know even mm. that internal prayer of Jesus I'm seeking after you I'm focused after you you're my north or if you are in you know in uh, biblical times it would be you're my east because of course east was their north but you know right. you understand what I'm saying it's that mm. sense of internal compass internal heart posture of I'm seeking after you Jesus Mm. And I think a lot of us, certainly those who get stuck, uh, get a bit worked up and get a bit kind of like overthinking things of how do I get into the spirit realm? But it's more about what I hear you teach a lot on. It's resting in to Holy Spirit. It's resting mm. into God. It's, it's coming into that peace of God. And peace becomes the warfare place where you enter into that. I'm settling myself. I'm just coming after you, Jesus. I just want to know you more. And if you need a helpful prayer, for those of you out there, this is the one that changed my life forever. First to Ephesians 17, 18, which is that, you know, calling for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know God more. Enlighten my heart, you know, that I would understand your ways, God, and understand you more. And I think meditating on that scripture with the posture of uh, focusing on, on Jesus and coming into that place of peace, um, I think that is the beginning point of access. I would say for those, some people really struggle 
to uh, trust the Lord sometimes because of their previous experiences, whether it be from, from man or whether it be from spiritual abuse or whether it be from, for example, if they've been in the psychic world and th the demonic have had a field day in their life. This takes a, a little time to get there, to say, Jesus, I trust you. I welcome you. I want you to come close to me. Um, and for some people, it's not an instantaneous because of history or because of learning, because of teaching, even in uh, the spirit of religion that is that has closed everything up. It can mm. take a while, <laughs> but I, I love this. Uh, I love this from and I used it in my book, actually, from Ernest Shackleton who writes this he was a pioneer he was an adventurer you know and I love to be one who's on the edge I'm like Lord I want to I know then is like right there you know we've had enjoyed some times in the spirit together where we just get in the spirit and in that new place and that's what it's all about for me it's about knowing Jesus and being on the edge with the Lord and what he's doing right now in the moment but Shackleton who is an explorer he said this and I think this is great advice put the footprint, the footprint of courage into the stirrup of patience. And mm. so there's that sense of, you know, be courageous, don't be afraid, you know, uh, that this is a safe thing when you go with Jesus, wherever he takes you. Uh, but you have to have patience and, and endurance to say, all I want is you and I'm willing to wait on you until, until you come, yeah until you show me, until you take me, um, you know, and for me, it, it, you know, it was a, a, a months and, and years of journeying with the Lord until there's that ease of access into the spirit realm. But I believe that that's yeah. speeding up right now. People are getting in there. I mean, people who've never heard of Jesus and kids, you know, children who are, who are just so wired for this. And it's a now thing that the Lord is opening up the spirit, isn't it? In a yeah. whole way yeah yeah there is there's a huge we're seeing it there's a huge awakening like you say there's a grace right now to be able to like you said there's just a grace to lock on to turn our the attention of our heart onto him because nothing else in the end is going to satisfy and like you said he's the doorway into the spirit realm into the biggest adventures that we could ever go on in our entire lives you want like you said if you want if you want to be a pioneer if you want to be an adventure in life start to flow with Jesus he takes you into the most extraordinary experiences with him doesn't he, he fulfills us and then he takes us to co-reign with him in all of mm -hmm. these assignments it's just you know in our, it's amazing but just when you were speaking then again it reminded me of something that I've been reading recently I've been looking at the desert fathers you mm. know and the early church and some of the the mystics who were just in love with Jesus and the keys from their life you know and there was one I was just um going to oh here it is I have my book up here thank you Jesus but I'd never heard of this guy before right and it's in um it's in a book that I've been reading by Henry Newen and it was by it was just a simple quote and it what you said just reminded me so much of this by a, a man called he was a mystic called Theophan the Recluse <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Okay. sounds like an amazing guy doesn't he and uh, and he says to pray is to descend with the mind into the heart are you talking about the Greek mindset, you know, and really it's to be an all immersive experience that we, we engage the Lord with all of our senses. You know, it's not an academic exercise mm. alone. I mean, it's great to study the word, but like you, you, you said so eloquently as well then SJ about the fact that you, the word is here, but then there's the life of the spirit underneath the word. And you, as you tune in spiritually, you begin to sense the, the depth of the intention of the Lord that's underneath the word and it's the doorway isn't it you begin to go in through the doorway of his word and experience him and the revelation contained within that word and so this is amazing and I think this encapsulates um what prayer is and helps us it gives us a key so which is so connected to what you're saying he says to pray is to descend with the mind into the heart and there to stand before the face of the Lord ever present all seeing within you that this is the place where the encounters happen mm. you know, because obviously as we know jesus is inside of us and as we descend with the mind into the heart and like you know begin to engage him with all of our 
senses or, or focusing completely on him, you will experience him. You, know, you will experience him. So, so be encouraged. It's it like, and I love the fact that you were saying as well. It it's simple, isn't it? It's religions made this very very complicated, and the Christian walk very complicated. But it's actual. It's about a life of union and you know increase and the, and like you said the there's a grace right now to be able to enter in for increased spiritual sensitivity I think beyond anything I've seen this far yes so another question that I wanted to ask oh, okay. you about mm -hmm. the revelation that the Lord has given you about the secret garden um that you write about in your book that it was your favorite movie when you were a little girl it was mine as well was it? it was it was I absolutely love that <clears throat> so when I was reading that chapter <clears throat> excuse me it was so special to me because it was um but the Lord's given you so much beautiful revelation about that that being a metaphor and the healing that he brings to our lives <clears throat> as we start to go there would you share a little bit of that revelation with us it was beautiful sure sure yeah I think um this is it, the, the sense of, you know, we, we move uh, in the peace of God, as we were saying, and I happened to be lying on a sunbed on holiday with my family. And the Lord said to me, ask me to show you your garden. And I was like, huh? You know, I was just literally lying on the sunbed. And I was like, okay, I didn't move. I was just like, Lord, show me my garden. You know, and in that instant, he took me in the spirit uh, to this beautiful location and started to unveil it to me in small um, views or vistas. And this sense of, you know, there were waters and there were fields and green and there were trees and there were, you know, there was wildlife in the garden. And I'm like, where are we? You know, I, I'm used to visiting you in your garden, Lord, where you are and where we meet together and have conversation. But this is not that. Um, and, and, you know, we know about the Garden of Eden, where God created man and, you know, where there's a meeting place and the walking together with the Lord. And that is quite a common thing for many prophets and other um, uh, mystical people who who meet with God and talk to him in a spiritual garden. But this was my spiritual garden. This was a personal spiritual garden. And there was a sense of actually the Lord starting to show me, said, look over here and started to talk to me about different areas where flourishing was happening and other areas where uh, attention was needed. And we know that the Lord um, uh, speaks to us about being the gardener and the, the, the one who tends the vineyard. And, you know, these are uh, imagery that moves throughout scripture and even in Song of Songs uh, where we hear about, you know, come winds and blow on my garden and yeah. scatter, uh, you know, the fragrance abroad. So this sense of actually our inner life, our spirit life, the meeting place of where we are with the Lord is something so personal, actually, that we each have that is designated ours. And I can't tell you over the years in, in having people ask the Lord that question when we're activating and seeing in the spirit and sensing in the spirit and saying that question, ask Jesus to show you your garden, the amount of revelation that comes to them about their own inner life, their spiritual life, things that the Lord has got his finger on that he wants to, if you will show them to dig up, to tend, and that might look like a dug up area of the garden, or it might, in, in some cases, I remember some people being asked, you know, dig up in this soil here in your own personal spirit garden, and I will reveal some things to you. And some objects coming up which told them about some generational things that needed to be dealt with in the spirit realm and so it's it's a phenomenal it's a phenomenal uh healing gift to be able to go there to see how you're flourishing with the lord and you know some people are like why is my garden so dry over here you know why is it right. not saturated and wet lord talk <laughs> to me about that because Liz, have we not believed a lie that we're not allowed to ask God questions and have a conversation with the Lord, that right. we should just get revelation and almost be silent? But yeah. I think there's this conversation back and forth, back and forth, this yeah. weaving of, of bondedness that the Lord does at each time we're in the spirit with him. So I think yeah. I would encourage people to ask that question, Lord, show me my garden, like in yeah. Song of Songs, and ex ex expose ourselves, if you will, and be brave to see actually what 
what healthiness or unhealthiness are we in the spirit mm. because the lord mm. he wants to help us get to the most flourishing saturated place that we can mm. possibly be mm. and it's an amazing tool it's an amazing thing it, it is it is and like you say you can you know that when he invites you there and you begin to see the condition of the the garden of your own heart you know you, you're and you know that he's he's for you the only reason he's showing you this is so you can give it to him so that he can be the solution and he can be, bring more healing and transformation like it says like like the story unfolds in the movie the secret garden it is it that's the journey of our life isn't it to this mm. ultimately to this beautiful transformed life and we become his perfect reflection it's just we don't need to fear him or fear fear anything he does in our life he's, he's perfect in all his ways isn't he and and yes. you and you just get to shine a little bit more you know and he's so faithful I've learned that down the years he's just yes. so faithful so oh, I can't believe how quickly that time's gone SJ oh my goodness so in finishing but can I just invite you to just whatever's in your spirit to pray prophesy whatever you want for people watching you know really for we're, we're just championing you all on family to just go deeper and deeper and deeper mm. than you ever have in Jesus, wherever you're at in your walk that you'll get breakthrough today, you'll get a shift forward today. If you're stuck, you'll go deeper today, you know, you'll get healing today. As I know, as we've been speaking, Esther has been sharing this, I felt the flow coming straight from the Lord's heart and everything that we've been saying. So I'm expecting miracles. So, mm. so SJ, can I just, can I just ask you to just pray and share whatever is in your powerful spirit oh, I, I just would i just think would like to share with with your community and those that are following this uh, great series that jesus is the way he is the truth and the life but he is the way he's the way through to the deeper revelation to the deeper understanding of god's mysteries to the deeper places of encounters of who he is connectivity with the lord and and we know that right now at this time it is easy to find that door like in the secret garden you know it was maybe challenging for the little girl to find the door and push the door open to enter into that secret garden but jesus is easy to find right now now. And it is that sense of, Lord, I want to enter in to you and through you into that place with expectancy, into that place with an expectant heart. And I, I've really felt this and the weight on this as well, this, this way of the ancient of days, the God who created all things, that he is the one who's making this available to us for this era. Why? Because we need it as the people of God uh, to stand strong so that we can also enter and allow others to come into that experience so that they can stand strong. And this is the way of the ancients and those ancient doors are open. And the ancients are ones like Enoch and Levi and Moses, the ones that the Old Testament says walked with God. And so there is this invitation to go through the door in the spirit realm that is Jesus into the way of the ancients and learn the way of the ancients and um, those who walked with God and and I just want to pray for you all listening to that that as we just release that impartation of hunger of desperation of more more of Jesus to just be desperate to be thirsty and have that yearning and passion and powerful um desire for more of him that that would not leave you that every time you meet with him even in a small way there would be an increase and there would be a greater desire and a greater yearning and an increase each time you experience and encounter him and his ways of the spirit that you would hunger after more not in the wrong way of of almost being addicted to encounter but being addicted to jesus you know being passionate for jesus it's all about him him. it all starts with him and make this your prayer lord i seek your face i seek your kingdom and i seek you as that door to enter into the fullness of life with you that is in the spirit and beyond what i know beyond what i've experienced take me there jesus because the way is open to you yeah. oh man oh man God, i can feel the presence of jesus he is wanting to take complete possession of our hearts 
it just is there's this yeah. we desire it right but I I agree SJ that every single one of you will experience that grace of supernatural hunger that keeps taking you deeper and deeper and deeper into him to become more and more and more consumed by him absorb him absorbing himself so to speak into you you becoming completely transformed filled with light walking as you said SJ as the ancients did learning the ancient paths the ways of the people that truly knew God, like Enoch, you know, he was walking so closely with Jesus, he didn't know death, he slipped through the realms, like Elijah, you know, he didn't experience death, he was taken to be with the Lord in the chariots, you know, as Elisha watched him go, <laughs> this is the family we belong to, this is the Lord that we belong to, there's it's just wild we, stuff. It's <laughs> wild. We're coming into the most amazing time in history. So, so amen to everything you've prayed. And thank you so much for sharing your treasures, SJ. It's always amazing being with you. A joy. It went fast. It did. It went really joy. fast. We'll do it again. <laughs> we'll do it again. And thank you all you on the journey. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, we and bless you all. Have the most amazing week of supernatural hunger and encounters with Jesus like you have never known and look forward to being with you again next week. God bless. <laughs>